Yo, if you're not watching that Marcy Memoirs, turn your Brooklyn card in. You heard? Your joint is expired. Now, all jokes aside, though, make sure you go to that Marcy Memoirs playlist on YouTube so you can see all five episodes that's on deck. We just getting started. Yersk. Shout out to the bro Saquon. Shout out to the whole Gen Pop, Slim Blunt gang, Comment gang. You heard, this is part three to that Peter Pan surviving North Carolina. You feel me? NC on the check and I see y'all in the comments. Crazy. Shout out to the whole Charlotte. Shout out to the whole NC. Make sure y'all comment gang this to death. You heard? Shout out to the bro Peter Pan, Brownsville, Riverdale Towers. You feel what I'm saying? Brooklyn. We moving out here, man. I don't know what y'all other dudes is doing. But we moving out here. You heard? You see them good rims. The rims is looking. The rims is spicy, baby. You heard? Z-Boy Suicide Polo with the Ski Boy. Make sure y'all hit me up for that promo. You heard? If you an artist, if you got a channel, a brand, and you ain't pushing it on this channel, you lacking, baby. Yeah. I got the CB on, like the truck driver CB, so I got that shit on, and I hear other truck drivers going the other way, like, yo, yo, driver, the police behind you, they trying to stop you, and I, I turn that shit off, I turn that shit off, I'm crying, driving 18, but I fuck that, these y'all just gonna have to kill me today, y'all take it, y'all take everything from me, I try to get a job, I come out of prison, get my life together, I, I, I get my own apartment, I get my car, y'all keep putting sheriff notices on my door, y'all wanna take everything, just kill me, man, just kill me. Yo, get there, everybody, get the fuck down, whoa, 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 whoa. I'm, get down. I'm like, yo, what the fuck, the program started already? You know what I'm saying? So I'm getting down to do military shit immediately. So I'm getting down to shit, you know, they explain the shit, everybody get up. We, they take us to the dorm to, you know, where we gonna be staying at. We, they process us in the dorm and give us a big ass key. We, they got, we got keys to our cells. You know what I'm saying? Like they give us these big gold keys and you can go, you can, you can, you can open your cell door and, and go in, in and out and walk around the house. You know what I'm saying? Last, I get the, in the jail. I checked in. I meet my roommate. I meet my cellmate. You know what I'm saying? I'm t he a South Carolina nigga. He kind of like a little nerdy nigga. I, I ain't gonna diss the nigga. He been there before me, so he. I, I need to learn from this nigga. Like, what the fuck going on? How this jail run? But I see he's not built like that. You know what I'm saying? So I'm going in there. I'm in the house with him. I'm like, yo, I'm from New York, man. Woo, woo, woo. He was like, yeah, man, yo, I'm from South Carolina. He was like, yeah, woo, woo. I'm making my bed and shit like that. Woo, woo. So the next morning, the next morning, we had to get up and do count. So when we come out our cells, we stand in front of our cell. He stand on the uh, right. I stand on the left in front of the cell. It's another nigga, another little nigga in the, in, the cell, in the cell next door to us. So the CO chick come around doing the cell and she calling out our, our names. And we supposed to say our names, inmate number and all of that. She got to us, like to our, to our names. And the little nigga said, yo, fuck that bitch. Whoa, whoa, whoa. So I ain't say nothing. That shit ain't got nothing to do with me. So she like, yo, who said that? Whoa. So me and the, my cellmate, we standing there, we standing there, but it came from our area. She knew it came from our area. So boom, nothing happened. You know, they did the count. We go back, me and the nigga, we go back in the cell. That last, like 10 minutes later, we in the cell, nigga knock on our cell door. The, my cellmate nigga opens the door I'm standing up, you know what I'm saying, on my feet. It's like five niggas, South Carolina, these niggas from Charleston. And then I'll never forget, shout out to the nigga Breadhead from Charleston, South Carolina. But he was one of the niggas that was with them. Breadhead and like four other niggas, these niggas already been in the jail. These niggas, these all, all type of shit. These niggas come to the cell like, yo, who said that shit, uh, fuck that bitch or whatever, woo, 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 woo. 
So them niggas looking at me, cause I just got in the house, I just got in the jail. So I'm like, yo, I ain't got nothing to do with that shit. I don't know who said that shit. Like, I ain't tell them like little niggas said. Like, oh, I'm not telling them like, I'm not, what the fuck I look like saying something. It was, he said it, he said it. So them niggas like, yo, New York, yo, what the, yo, what's up? I'm like, yo, what's up? You know what I'm saying? So them niggas like, yo, you said that shit to the CEO. I was like, yo, I ain't say nothing to that CEO. You know what I'm saying? He's like, well, this ain't gonna be happening. Whoa, whoa, whoa. You just got here. Whoa, whoa, whoa. I said, well, I ain't say nothing to that CEO. So the nigga like, well, I'm telling you, nigga, you ain't, you ain't gonna, ain't none of that. You just got here. This is what it is, and this is, this is going down. You know what I'm saying? So I'm like, all right, you know what I mean? All right, cool. So these niggas, you know what I'm saying? They kind of like press me, you know what I mean? Mind you, I'm by myself. I sell, man. He ain't going to, this is square nigga. He ain't going to pop. He ain't going to do nothing. You open the door for these, sell door for these niggas. Because you scared of these niggas. So the niggas, you know, we have words or whatever. Woo, woo, woo. So them niggas turn around and leave. You know what I'm saying? They leave the sale. I'm in the house, you know what I'm saying? So... Boom, we going through the fucking boot camp program or whatever. Boom, 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 boom. So one day we go to the fucking day room. It's a day room like downstairs on the bottom tier. So, you know, I'm coming out. I go out to the day room, so I'm chilling in the TV room and shit like that. So niggas is rapping. Them, them niggas is rapping and shit, but them niggas rap different. They rap like M Ball and AG, uh, M Ball and A uh, Ball and MJG and them niggas style. So them niggas got the little cypher going on or whatever. So I get in the little cypher, you know what I'm saying? I'm like, yo, yo, let me spit like that. So I'm like, no, let me say my shit. So I get in the cypher and shit. I'm rhyming, I'm spitting. But I'm rhyming like a New York nigga. Punch lines and all that, you know what I'm saying? So these niggas like, oh, shit. Yo, that nigga nice. Yo, that nigga that. Because the geeks, they talk geeky in South Carolina. Yo, that boy good. That boy good. That boy good right there. Yo, that boy good. Yo, New York. That boy good. Yo, New York. Spit that shit, New York. So I'm rapping and shit, you know what I'm saying? So the nigga Breadhead, he was one of the niggas that came to the cell to like to try to press me about, you know what I mean? That nigga next door saying, fuck that CO bitch. Breadhead took a liking to me. So Breadhead took a liking to me and all of that. So, you know, me and Breadhead kicking it. Yo, New York, that shit wasn't about nothing, man. You know what I'm saying? Yo, we just run the house, so you know what I mean? Like, you know, we just trying to keep the shit in order. You know what I'm saying? And I was like, yo, Breadhead, man, I ain't say none of that shit, though, to that CEO chick. You know what I'm saying? So he was like, yeah, yeah, we, uh, that's all right, New York. He's like, no, New York, you good. You cool, you know what I mean? So Breadhead, another nigga named Catman. You know what I'm saying? All these niggas, that's their little clique. So all them niggas started liking me. But the one nigga that said, yo, but I'm telling you, his name, I think his name was CC. He was the one that, he, me and him got cool, but I know, like, that nigga flip on me, you know what I mean, any given time, you know what I mean? But, CC, you know, it never came down to it. So now I'm comfortable in the fucking jail and right, in, in the little program and shit. I'm going to, like, phase two. I get to, like, phase two of the program. They told me pack up, taking me to another fucking prison. Now, this shit out in the woods. Now, on my 13 months is almost up that I'm supposed to do. So, they take me to another prison. This shit ain't got no fence, but it's so far back in the woods, you don't know where you at. So, now, I get off the bus at this new prison. They on horses. The COs is on horses. They giving us the rundown. We get off the bus. Whoa, whoa, whoa. I'm telling y'all, this ain't this camp right here ain't got no fences. Y'all niggas so deep in the motherfucking woods. By the time y'all run off the camp and get to the highway, y'all we'll be waiting for you, and y'all gonna be begging for us to take you back to prison. So I'm like, yo, what the fuck is this shit? So boom, I, man, let me do what I gotta do. I gotta get the fuck out of here. I went through the little program and all of that. It's time for me to get out and shit. You know what I'm saying? Uh, 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 being that I lived in North Carolina, they was only giving me a bus ticket back to the town where I caught the charge at because that was by the state line. They only giving me a bus ticket back to there. And then my man's got to come and get me and take me across state lines to bring me into, uh, to bring me into North Carolina. Yeah, so uh, my man's and them came and got me and shit last. So... You know, niggas happy that I'm home. Yo, P, welcome home. Niggas bought me clothes and all of that shit. Remember I tell you, the nigga that gave me the uh, the Mac 11 and all that, you know, he was there and all that. Yo, P, welcome home. Nigga bought me a pair of Gore-Tex boots. I had to dust some the Gore-Tex systems out. I got to go. So, you no know, niggas looked out for me. I come home and shit, right? So, now I'm on parole, right? So, I got to give these niggas five years parole in South Carolina. But... I, I check in with a parole officer in North Carolina, but South Carolina was supervising the shit. 
You know what I mean? So um, I said, yo, I got to get my life together, man. I got, I can't, I can't I, I'm on parole. I don't want to go back to South Carolina. I violate this shit. The niggas put me back in the fucking woods some fucking way. You know what I'm saying? So I, I'm going along with the parole shit. So I went to the unemployment office. The parole officer said, yo, go to the unemployment office, go look, find you a job. I go I go to the parole, parole, unemployment office, go find me a job. She gave me a job. Uh, the job only lasts for like a week, tip agency shit. And I go, go back to the unemployment office, sit at the computer, do all of this shit all over again. You know what I'm saying? And go back to another job. So I'm telling the black lady, I said, miss, look, I can't do this shit. I need me a steady fucking job. You know, I can't. They making me work one week and sending me back to the, the assignment is over. I can't live like this, yo. I'm gonna fuck around and go back to prison. What I do, I go back to the block, class. You know what I'm saying? I go back to the block. I'm hustling with the. I told you my man in the beginning where he did the ten years. My man T. I go back to his block. His his block. He in prison now. He doing this. He got a ten year stretch. So I go back to the block. I'm trying to get that 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 co-signed you being out there. Not the niggas I was getting this in with the gang niggas with the nigga that I met from the spa in the bathroom at the high school. So I, I go back to that block. I'm on parole. I'm selling crack again. In between me selling crack again, I'm going to these little assignments, these little unemployment shits. You know? So I tell the lady in the unemployment office, I said, miss, I can't do this. You know what I'm saying? The job is not lasting. She said, well, look, we got a program in here. We're going to give you a one-shot deal, P. I was like, what's the one-shot deal? She said, we're going to put up the money from the unemployment office. We going to send you to welding school or you can go to truck driving school. You don't have to pay the school no money back. It's called like a JTPA, a job training pro, some shit, where they help to give you a second chance. You know what I'm saying? So I was like, all right, so I'm going to take the truck driving shit. I go through the truck driving program and all of that. Mind you, I'm on parole, so I'm in truck driving school. Now, these recruiters is coming from trucking companies that's coming to the school want me to come work for them. I'm on parole. I ain't supposed to leave the state. But it's something kept telling me, P, just cross that bridge when you get there. Don't drop out this school. So I'm telling my parole officer, I'm like, yo, I'm in truck driving school, man. Whoa, 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 whoa. The lady put me up on the program. You know, that's why I ain't got no job right now. So he was like, all right, either you go on to school or you're going to have to get a job or you go back to prison. You know what I mean? So he was like, all right, I'm going to let you go to the school. He's thinking I'm going to the truck driving school and I'm going to get a local job and I'm going to be driving truck driver around the town. You know what I'm saying? So I'm telling him, yo, I, I, I got a job with a trucking company, and but the shit is in Omaha, Nebraska, the main terminal. They're going to give me a bus ticket to go to Omaha, Nebraska and do orientation. He's like, hell no. You can't do that. You can't leave the state. You're on parole like that. You know what I'm saying? So, um... I'm telling the parole officer, I'm like, look, man, I'm trying to change my life around, yo. I, I this, they giving me a one shot deal. I want to take this opportunity, you know what I'm saying? He's like, P, you can't leave. You can't do no shit like that. I'm thinking you're going to truck driving school. You're gonna be driving for Pepsi Cola, some shit around here. I'm like, nah, this shit is over the road. You know what I'm saying? So. The nigga was like, all right, go to school. I'm not promising you nothing, but I gotta talk to my supervisor. So I'm still, I, last, when I'm going to truck driving school, I'm still on my man block. I'm going back and forth selling cracks. I got the textbook out me making sales, carrying the book, making sales, and then I go sit in the park and read some chapters out of the book. Somebody walk up, I make a sale, go back and sit down, read some chapters out of the book. One of the crackhead niggas, he was like, yo, P, I see what you're trying to do, yo, yo I respect that. He's like, yo, P, do that truck driving shit, you know what I'm saying? And uh, I don't want to see you out here no more, you know what I'm saying? I was like, yo, I'm telling the crackhead nigga named Bobby. I was like, yeah, Bobby, I'm trying to get up for this shit, but I, I can't catch no case while I'm doing this shit. So, you know, I'm making my little sales or whatever. One day, last out of the fucking blue, the parole officer called me from the, the, where I paroled at in North Carolina. Let me like my shit again. So, he called me. So, he was like, Yo, I spoke to my supervisor. I told my supervisor what you trying to do. My supervisor said, you come down, you gotta go to South Carolina because they is the main one supervising you. I just check in with a parole officer in North Carolina. He said, you gotta go to South Carolina and go down there and take a piss test. Last, I'm smoking weed, selling crack. I know my urine dirty. 
he tell me, go to South Carolina, you go report to them, go down there, go report to this parole officer down there, boom. I said, all right. So my man, brother, I call my man brother, my man Andy, he don't smoke weed. So I said, yo, Andy, yo, son, I'm fucked up right now. I might be going back to prison. He said, yo, what happened? I said, yo, I need to get some piss from you. I said, I need to get some clean piss from you. He said, all right, come to my crib. I went to his crib. I stopped at his store, bought some condoms. I bought some condoms and shit. Now, you know, the condoms is greasy. So... I, the, the, all the grease, like the lubricant on the condom, I'm rubbing the shit all over my pants, trying to get the grease off on my way. My step pops took me to his crib before he threw me to South Carolina. I'm rubbing all the grease off the condom, and I got it all off or whatever. I go to Andy crib, to Andy pissing a cup or a bottle or whatever, pissing that, and I'm gonna pour the piss in the condom. I had a safety pin, like the little metal safety pin. I I put on a pair of briefs, not boxes, you know, the briefs, I don't know, well, you should know, you know, the briefs got that little pocket you can put in, you know, the, the drawers, so I take the fucking, um, I put a pair of briefs on, I take the fucking condom filled with piss, I put it in a little pocket between my legs, I got the safety pin pinned on to my drawers, and I'm all the way down from North Carolina to South Carolina, I told my step pop, turn the heat on, so he turns the heat on, I got my legs crossed, I'm trying to keep the piss warm so i got my legs crossed all the way to south carolina i'm like i'm telling myself this is my one shot deal if i go down here and this nigga catch me doing this shit i'm going to prison immediately i'm, I'm going to prison from his office you know what i mean so i get down there to south carolina i meet the parole officer down there i'm like yo they told me to come down here i got to see you you know what i'm saying so um He's like, come up here. I got to take you up here in this bathroom. You're going to do this piss test for me. This piss test for me. So, he take me in the piss test. But it's not like a job shit, lads. It's a piss test where he got a little stick and he could tell me my results immediately. I'm thinking I'll take a piss test and they got to call me back a couple of weeks later or whatever. You know what I'm saying? So, um, he had the little stick in the cup. He come to the bathroom with me now. You know, parole, it ain't like a job. A job, they give you the cup and tell you to go take a piss in the bathroom. He got to supervise me and watch me. So I go to the urinal. I go to the urinal with the little cup that he give me. I dig like I'm digging like I dig like I'm pulling my, 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 my shit out. Like my dick out. I'm digging in my drawers like I'm pulling my dick out. I take the safety pin. I pops it. Now he's standing in the doorway. He's not even watching me. He's standing with his back turned. So I don't, I'm not trying to look at him to make eye contact with him so we can look over there like, what you doing? So I just took the safety pin. I popped it, left it in there, bust a hole in the condom. I got the shit in my hand and I'm squeezing it out in the fucking, um, in the cup that he gave me. I'm squeezing it in the cup. It's making a little piss out. The, it's coming out regular and shit like that. I take the condom. Now the condom busted. The shit got a hole in it. I pushed the condom back, whatever piss I had left, I pushed it back down in my drawers. So I got piss running all in my, another nigga piss running all down my balls, all down my thighs. <laughs> and shit. So I turns, I kind of like turn my body to like the hand, the parole officer dude, the cup. I hands him the cup. He takes the stick. Now, I'm trying to keep my body turned like a certain way, like I'm still getting my pants together, like buckling my belt. He put the stick in the fucking shit in like probably like, probably about like 30 seconds. He said, all right, you good like that. He said, this is what I'm going to tell you to do. He said, you're going to call when you leave here. You call your parole officer back in North Carolina and tell him you came you reported to me and you took the test so mind you i'm i'm still got my body kind of like turned well he don't my pants is soaking fucking wet but he don't see it last you know what i'm saying so he walks off with the pit he well he poured it out in the sink he just wanted to test the cup test the piss and threw the shit in the trash or whatever boom, boom. i go back to the lobby where my step pops at i tell him yo come on come on come on like that he's like oh what? he stuttered real bad what happened Pete? i was like yo come on let's go you know what i'm saying let's go to the car just took the drug test like that so we drive back to North Carolina, I get back to my mom's crib and shit, you know what I mean? I ain't even take a shower and all of that yet. I, you know what I'm saying? My shit's still damp and all of that. I called a parole officer. I called a parole officer. I said, yo, I just went to do what you said. And um, I took the, uh, 
piss test like that. He said, yeah, I talked to my supervisor. My supervisor said, you good. This is real. Don't worry about nothing. He said, uh, you're going to get some paperwork in the mail saying that your parole has been like vacated or some shit like that. He said, your parole is going to get vacated. He said, yo, P, yo, go ahead, man. Have a good life. I wish you well with your truck driving shit. I was like, yo, I appreciate that, man. You know, I pre he said, don't worry about reporting to me no more. I'm going to send you a letter in the mail. You take, you just read that letter and you good. We good. You off parole. Last, I beat them niggas out of five years parole. I had just got out of prison and started going to the unemployment office with a job. I only been out of prison like four or five months. Mm. So, so when I was going to unemployment and she told me about the truck driving program, I took that but couldn't leave the state, but I had to wait for my supervisor, my PO, tell me I was good from his supervisor. I beat them niggas out of five years parole. So I only did 13 months in prison down there in South Carolina. I came home, was on parole for like three or four months. Uh, uh, and then that's how I beat parole. So now I'm happy, last yo, last. I'm trying to go on with my life, yo. I'm trying to, it's always something, last. I'm trying to go on with my life, right? So boom, I get the char, I get the truck driver job. I drive out to Omaha, Nebraska. I'm saying to myself, I'm a convicted felon. I'm a Brownsville nigga. Y'all just went through all of this bullshit. What the fuck? These white folks gave me a big ass 18 wheeler. They don't know who the fuck I am. You know what I'm saying? So I'm driving the truck, the 18 wheeler. You know, now being that I was on parole, I went to prison. Unbeknownst to me, my baby moms went and took child support out on me. You know what I mean? So I'm not beefing about it. Last, okay, I got a job now. I got an 18 wheeler. You know what I mean? I ain't got no problem with complying with social services. So they social services called me down there and said, yo, you got to come down here. You know what I mean? I said, yo, I don't got a problem with it. Me and my baby mom's together, not together no more. And she said, what you doing? I said, yo, I just came out of prison, but I'm driving an 18-wheeler now. I'm trying to get my shit together. But the trucking shit wasn't paying me a lot of money last because I ain't had no experience. So I was only making probably like... After, you know, I'm eating on the road, buying food. I don't know nothing really about trucking. I'm playing. I'm in the truck stop blowing $20, $30 in video games at the truck stops and shit. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? So I'm fucking, by the time I get my check, I got like three or $400. So I'm like, hold on. I thought truck drivers make a lot of money. But, which they do. But I just had to get my experience first before any, I could leave this company and go to some other company and they make more money. So, I'm starting to do good. I'm starting to get on my feet. Last, I went and got me an apartment. I got me an apartment and shit. You know what I mean? I bought me an Infinity J30, the little slope back ones. The one with the slope back. The old Infinity J30s. I'm doing that. I'm complying with the child support. They garnishing from my check from the trucking company. They garnishing my shit. I'm on the road. You know what I'm saying? I come home last... I go to the crib, I park the 18 wheel at the truck stop, I go home to the crib, I'm trying to get up with my mans and them to hang out for the weekend, you know what I mean, woo, woo, woo. Now, um, before that, I'm driving the little 18 wheeler, the, the, the front part, not with the trailer, so I'm coming through the hood while I was selling the tracks on the 18 wheeler. Niggas is bucking out, P, yo, what the fuck you doing in the 18 wheeler, like, son, I got like, oh, I'm driving the 18 wheeler now. You know what I mean? So I did all that shit. I come home one day off the road. I go to my apartment. Last, I got a big red yellow sticker on my door with the sheriff's department. So I'm like, yo, what the fuck is this shit? I go, it got a number on it. I call the phone number on the shit. Woo, woo, woo. It's like, yo, this is sheriff's office. I came by the tenant, call you. You, uh, you got a warrant for your arrest. I said, I got a warrant for my arrest for what? You know what I'm saying? He said, child support. I said, what you mean, child support? They got my fucking information. They garnished my wages. I see it on my pay statements. That what they took out. They taking $96 out a week out of my paycheck. I'm in compliance. What are you talking about? It was like, well, you got to go down there. I just came to put the stick on your door and let you know we came by the crib. My baby mom so mad at me last because she know me. She got she had this thing in her mind like, all right, we ain't going to grab her no more. You driving the 18 wheeler now. You making money. I want more money. So they sent the letter to the crib. I'm on the road, last. I don't know nothing about no letter. They sent the letter to the crib saying I got to come for a fucking adjustment, some kind of adjustment. They wanted more money. 
she keep putting pressure on the caseworker with the child support saying she want more money. Now they had to send a letter to my house to make an adjustment on my payments. I goes to, I goes to fucking uh, court. And then, you know, uh, I go in front of the judge and all that. They doing me dirty. The caseworker telling me, Yana, he's driving the 18 wheeler. The baby, uh, the baby mom, she wants more money. The judge raises my child support, like probably like another 150, 200 dollars. You know what I mean? So I'm like, damn, yo, like, boom, all right, boom. I gotta make adjustments now. I can't keep playing these video games in this truck stop, eating Burger King every day and all this other shit. I gotta go to Walmart now and buy meat. I'm buying turkey, bread, meat. I'm surviving in the truck. You know what I'm saying? Boom, boom, boom. About three months later, last, I swear to God, I come home off the road. I got another letter on my door, another sticker, a yellow red sticker on my apartment door. I'm like, what the fuck is this shit? Call the number again, same shit. Yo, you got to go back to court. Goes back to the fucking court. They said, yo, we got to uh, make another adjustment. And all that. I said, yo, I just did an adjustment. Like, what y'all trying to do? I don't make a lot of money. This is my first year driving a truck. I don't have no experience. I, I'm trying to, I, my checks is like four, five hundred dollars a week. Oh, y'all thinking I'm making a whole, I don't make a lot of money. You know what I mean? Well, we got to make another adjustment. Well, when your baby moms came down here again, uh, raise my shit again, lads. Mm. All right. They repossessed my infinity. I can't afford it no more, lads. They repossessed it, you know what I'm saying? They took my car back, so I'm like, I only got my crib now. So I'm getting stressed, lads, you know what I'm saying? I'm young, you know what I'm saying? I'm like, by this time, I'm like 23, 24, which I ain't making no excuses for a man, but, you know, I I, I got on some suicide shit, you know what I'm saying? I was, I, I was depressed, I was stressed, I had a nervous breakdown, you know what I'm saying? So I called my baby mom's crib one day. I was in, I'm in Knoxville, Tennessee at the truck stop. No matter what we going through, I still want to talk to my daughter. You know what I'm saying? I call her from the truck stop. Say, yo, whoa, 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 whoa. she telling me, yo, she got a new boyfriend with her. I don't care, lass. He taking care of your daughter, and we were doing more than your daughter than you for doing. I'm like, yo, but I'm paying child support. You keep going back to child support, fucking um, getting more increases. And I'm, I don't care about that, but like, can, like, can you put my daughter on the phone, please, man? No, you got some money? You gonna send us some money? I'm like, yo, you getting the child support money? Where did it, I don't have no money to send you. She bangs the phone on me, hang up the phone on me. Vlaz, Vlaz, I lost it. I lost it. You hear me? Mm. I takes the, I jumps back in the 18 wheeler at the truck stop. I takes the 18 wheeler, it's like a four lane highway. So when I pull out the truck stop, I'm supposed to make a right. Cause there's a one way and then on a, across the grass and then there's two more lanes, the, the, the other shit going the other way. I gunned it. I took the fucking 18 wheeler and I just gunned it and blew across all four lanes. I didn't see the nigga. It was a police getting gas at the gas station, putting gas in the car. He seen me blow out the truck stop and make the left and come to head on traffic. I'm crying, lads. You know what I'm saying? I'm like, yo, fuck that. They keep taking my shit. I keep losing shit. They just took my car. They want to put me in jail. And whoa, whoa, I can't take this shit no more. I drive the 18 wheeler, so the cop immediately, I seen him close the gas tank on his door, hop in the car, do the spin around and come behind me. I get on I-40 in Knoxville, Tennessee on the get on ramp, but it's the get off ramp, where the car's getting off the interstate coming down the ramp. I take the 18 wheeler and go up the ramp, the head of traffic. So I get on the interstate and get all the way in the far left lane, and I'm driving, of course, head on traffic. So now, Every, like, every exit I'm getting on, it's more state troopers getting on, getting on the ramps. So I got, like, 10, 15 state troopers on, behind me. So I'm in the truck crying and shit. They trying to come up on the, um, on the right side where the trailer wheels is at. With the, on the 18-wheeler, like, the trailer, the, 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 the axles with the trailer. So I'm swinging the 18 wheeler trying to get them from getting upside my door so they come trying to get on the left and then when i slurred to the left to block them another one come on the right i swerve over to block him so they must have called the head and then shut the interstate down so i'm wondering why i'm driving crying why are no more cars coming my way 
So ain't no more cars coming on my way. I hear it. I got the CB on, like the truck driver CB. So I got that shit on, and I hear other truck drivers going the other way. Like, yo, yo, driver, the police behind you. They trying to stop you. No, no, I, I turn that shit off. I turn that shit off. I'm crying, driving 18 wheel. I fuck that. These y'all just gonna have to kill me today. Y'all take it. Y'all took everything from me. I try to get a job. I come out of prison, get my life together. I try, I, I get my own apartment. I get my car. I keep putting sheriff notices on my door. Y'all wanna take everything? Just kill me, man. Just kill me. He came to an overpass. Like you know, if you're on the interstate and you got another highway or raised above, it'd be an overpass of other cars going the other way. They had the fucking. Like six state troopers lined up under that overpass. I mean, under that overpass. They had them lined up under it. So it's like crunch time. Either I'm going to bust through the fucking state troopers' cars or I'm going to stop. You know what I'm saying? So I got like 15 state troopers on me and on, on, on the back of me. They're on the back of me. I'm coming up to this underpass shit. They got it blocked off with the shotguns over the hood. Over the, the roof, I mean. Over the roof of the fucking... Big trooper car, they got the shotgun. So, boom, I made it up to there. So, I'm like, damn, I'm finished. I'm going back to prison or whatever, you know what I mean? So, I stopped probably like, I'm on the interstate. I'm going to just say a block because I don't know how, like, like it's probably like a half, a, like about a quarter of a mile in front of all the state trooper cars. Like, the, I stop. I get up out the driver's seat now. The state troopers behind me, they all surrounded the truck they got shotguns out all big ass kind of rifles and shit like that so what i did was in my 18 wheeler i got curtains in here like when i parked for the night i could just close the curtains and to be in the back and shit for my privacy so what i did was i i, I kept my doors locked they banging on the door shit like, get out the car get out i mean get out the truck get out get out get out so i jump out the driver's seat sit back there in the back in the bunk of my bed close the curtains i'm sitting there crying and shit you know what i'm saying so they brought in that so i'm screaming now y'all just gonna have to come in here and kill me y'all so it's a standoff so i'm like y'all niggas just gonna have to come in here and kill me kill me y'all want to take everything from me kill me kill me like that so i open the curtains up lads i come and sit in the driver's seat i sit in the driver's seat so now i'm sitting in the driver's seat one of the state troopers got up on the step or the side of the 18 wheeler he got the fucking gun in my face like that. The, open the door. Open the fucking door. Like that. You know what I'm saying? So I got another state trooper on the passenger side. He got a shotgun through the window. And he's standing there. Open that fucking door. Open that fucking door. Like that. You know what I mean? So he did the one on the driver's the uh, passenger side. He did something like I thought he was like trying to he was trying to get in the door. So when I turned my head left, the state trooper that was on my driver's side he bust the window and bust the glass all in my face and bust it on the like on the back of my neck because i had my face turned it didn't get my face it got the back of my neck and shit and bust my neck open like i had a big ass gash from the glass and shit he snatched me through the window he didn't even open the door now you know the track the trailer sit up high and like from regular cars that big white man grabbed me through the window and ripped me out the fucking window and, and pull me out and slam me on the highway and uh, just the middle of the interstate they come running around they beating the shit out of me so uh, uh, they uh, when I was telling them when I was yelling in the truck before they broke the window I said y'all gonna have to kill me today y'all gonna have to kill me today so as they when they finally got me out the truck and snatched me through the window and beating the shit out of me with sticks and all that shit and I'm saying don't kill I'm yelling now don't kill me don't kill me don't kill me so the big cracker like you said to kill you right you know, big you know you tend to see big crackers you know what I'm saying no we gonna kill you you know what I'm saying <laughs> I'm telling nah don't kill me don't kill me don't kill me <laughs> <laughs> so, so right they put me in the fucking state trooper car right so, you know, I got, man, I'm tight. I got my eyes is watering and all that. So one of the state troopers come over there with a flashlight and put it in the back, like to the back window of the state troopers in the, in the, in the, in the, in the back window of the state trooper car where I'm sitting at. So I hear him, cause, you know what I'm saying, telling the other state trooper, yeah, he's high, he's on drugs. You know what I'm saying? I wasn't on no drugs um, last, you know what I'm saying? I was just, my eyes was just red. You know, I was crying and wilding out. You know what I'm saying? So I hear him tell you, yeah, he's on drugs. You know what I mean? So, boom, they take me to the fucking county jail. I was in um, KCDC, Knoxville County Detention Center. This is Knoxville, Tennessee. 
So they put me in the cell and took all my clothes and gave me a paper gown, put me on suicide watch. This little, this like a little thin little fucking gown, a little paper shit, like thin like tissue. They said, take all your clothes off and all that. Word. Gave me the fucking gown. I put the gown on. I'm in the cell now. You know what I'm saying? It's cold in the motherfucker. So I'm in the county jail the first night. I'm in there. So I'm taking a little tissue paper and I'm trying to plug the little holes up in the vent where the cold air is coming in at. I'm taking tissue, plugging that shit up. You know what I mean? Like, yo, it's freezing in here. I'm like, God damn. I said, right, my truck driving career is over. I said, it's over with. I, I'm finished. You know what I'm saying? Whatever they're going to do to me, it's, I, I don't know if I'm going to prison in, down here in Tennessee or they're going to sit. Well, I'm off parole in South Carolina, so I ain't worried about that. I got a whole other situation now right here in Tennessee. You know what I'm saying? So, boom. <laughs> the next day, a fucking doctor came. The doctor came to my cell and she said, the black lady, she was like, yo, uh, I'm such a such psych evaluator or something like that. Whoa, whoa, my head said they picked you up last night. You have to come to psyche with it because they put you on suicide watch. So I'm like, yeah, I'm telling her, yo, listen, listen, miss. I'm talking to you as a black man to another black woman. You know what I'm saying? Listen, I'm going through a lot right now. You know what I'm saying? I, my baby mom, I explained the situation with my child support. I was trying to get my life together. And, you know, they're taking everything from me. You know what I'm saying? And my baby moms keep pushing the issue and they keep taking more money from me that I don't have. You know what I'm saying? So she was like, yeah, but being that they put you on suicide watch, you got to take this medicine. I said, what's that? She had a little cup with two pills in it. <coughs> I said, miss, I'm not crazy. I'm not, you know, I had a nervous breakdown. I was on the phone with my baby mom. She wouldn't let me talk to my daughter anger and hung up the phone on me. She said, but still, you under psych watch. You got I got to watch you take this medicine. She said, I said, she, she's, uh, she said, take this medicine. When I talked to the head doctor, she said, the head doctor will be here in like a couple of days or whatever. You know what I'm saying? And I talked to him and I explained the situation to him and tell him like, yo, you was going through some personal issues. You don't have a mental problem. She said, but right now you got to take this medicine. I got the sign on this chart that you took your medicine. I take the fucking cup. You know what I'm saying? Get water out of the little sink to sell. I take the fucking two pills, put it in my mouth, and I kind of like put it under my tongue. She didn't do the, let me see your tongue and all that. You know what I mean? I tell her that, you know, I said, I, I, she thought I swallowed it. I gave I threw the cup down. She was like, all right, cool. Remember a couple of, you got to stay a couple of days, and then, you know, I talk to the doctor, the head doctor for you. She leaves the cell. No laughs. It's like, I'm in there like 20 days now. No fucking doctor never came back and said, she's coming, keep bringing me pills. Like, like every five or six days, maybe. Bringing me bad pills. I'm like, yo, I mean, I, miss, I just told you, I told you this like 20 days ago. I'm not crazy. Why do you keep giving me these pills? But I'm spitting the pills out in the toilet. I never swallowed the pills, you know what I'm saying? So... I wound up staying in the county jail in the crazy house for 26 days, but the 25th day she came. On the 25th day, she came and said, I talked to the doctor. You know what I'm saying? I, I talked to the doctor, I told the doctor your situation, you know what I mean? Shit like that, you know what I mean? You, I told him that you had a mental breakdown. I told him about the child support shit and all of that. You just had a mental breakdown. You young, you going through a lot, you know what I'm saying? I said, yeah. She said, they're going to release you tomorrow. I said, they're going to release me where? Like, population said, no, you, they're going to release you out of the county jail. You can go home, but we can't buy you a bus ticket back to North Carolina. We can only get you a bus ticket to the Tennessee state line, and then somebody will have to come and get you from the North Carolina line. You know what I'm saying? So that next morning, they gave me my clothes back and everything and released me and shit like that. You know what I mean? So I called my job, the trucking company that I was working for. You know what I'm saying? I was like, I talked to the dispatcher, like one of the dispatchers, and she, I told her, like, yo, I had a nervous breakdown. You know, I'm sorry. I misrepresented the company. You know what I'm saying? But they released me, so I'm gonna come back to work and shit. Like, she said, uh-uh. She was like, they said you can't come back for this company no more. You took the 18 wheeler and you had a possibly chase with the police. Like, we can't hire you back. You know what I'm saying? So I'm like, all right, cool. Um, I get home, you know what I mean? That's why I said my mom's is so thorough, yo. My mom's is thorough. I love my mom's, yo. My mom's knew what I was going through with all the child support. My mom's was, you know what I mean? But my mom, ain't nothing my mom's can do. My mom's like, just go to court so they don't 
give you no warrant and you lose your trucking job and all that. Just keep going to court. Just pay it. It's going to get greater later. Don't worry about it. You know what I mean? I got your back. Don't worry about it. You know what I mean? You need some help with the child, I help you pay it, which I ain't want my mom's helping me. I was trying to do it myself, but they keep increasing it because she keep running, my baby mom keep running down there, putting, they putting their foot on her, put her foot on their neck, they putting their foot on my neck. So my mom's, when I got out the fucking crazy house, I go back to North Carolina, I walk in the door at my mom's crib, you know what I mean? My mom's like, look, sit down, you know, my mom keeping the honey with me. My mom like, sit down, let me talk to you. She said, let me tell you something. Don't you ever do that shit like that again. I was like, you know what I'm saying? Like what? You know what I'm saying? Don't you ever, I don't give a fuck what you going through. Don't you ever try to kill yourself about no motherfucking child support. I don't fuck that bitch. You know what I'm saying? You can find you another little job around here and woo, 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 but fuck that bitch. I ain't got nothing to do with it. I'm not helping that bitch. I know, you know what I'm saying? She's like, but fuck that shit. Don't you ever try no shit like that again. You know what I'm saying? I was like, yeah, ma, I know. I said, ma, I just had a nervous breakdown. You know, ma's like, yeah, I know. I, I know. You know what I'm saying? She said, I know. You know what I'm saying? So, um, so boom. I fucking, um, I, uh, I, I wound up getting a little temporary job. You know what I'm saying? So I got a little temporary job and shit. But it was it was like one of them daily work, daily pay. They was only paying me like $40 a day. Then they charge $5 to ride the van. They take it out of your pay every day. So I only make like $35 a day. But the, the little temp agency shit, it was way across town. Like in North Carolina, the bus stopped running at a certain time. So I had to be on the other side of town where that temp agency was at. You know what I'm saying? To get, the, get in line and get an assignment, get a job for the day. So I knew the bus ain't run over by my mom's crib. So I had to do what I had to do last. I was like, and kind of like in survival mode. So I would go to the little temp agency, to the little daily workplace. I would leave there, get off of work at six o'clock. It was a Greyhound bus station, like up the block from it. So I would walk around all day, dirty clothes, you know what I mean, all shit. I was like fucking homeless. I didn't want to go, go, I couldn't go to my mom's crib, stay in my mom's crib and make the job. It, it wouldn't have worked out for me like that. So I just go to the tent place, walk around all day, wait till it get dark, and then go to the Greyhound bus station. Now the Greyhound bus stations, they wasn't using all of their buses. Some buses was just parked there. I would break in the Greyhound buses, I would break in the buses and go all the way to the last seat in the back. Like, you know, the Greyhound buses, that last seat got the long row. You know what I'm saying? So I would go, I would go break in the Greyhound buses at the bus station, go down there and sleep in the last seat, but I had a cell phone, you know what I'm saying? I had a cell phone and you know, the, the little daily place was, the, the tent place was helping me keep my little cell phone. So I called to New York and I was calling Millie, Millie Mo. You know what I'm saying? I'm like, yo, Millie, son, I'm fucked up, son. You know what I'm saying? He was like, yo, what's up? I heard you down there driving 18 wheelers. I said, nah, son, I wilded out. I got into a high speed chase with the fucking police. And whoa, 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 whoa. He was like, what? I was like, yeah. He's like, well, where the fuck you at? I said, son, I'm in the, I'm in the Greyhound bus. I got broke in the bus. This is where I'm sleeping at every day because it's up the street from the temp agency so he was like nah son you can't go out like that son what the fuck is you doing i said son this the only thing keeping my phone on you know what i'm saying i can't you know what i'm saying i ain't got no clothes like i look filthy son you know what i'm saying so I, he was like yo get a fucking bus ticket you know what i'm saying so i said all right let me just finish this week out at the temp agency so i kept going to temp agency the rest of that week I got me a bus ticket. I called him back. Their son, I got a bus ticket. I'm coming back to New York, son. You know what I'm saying? He was like, all right, get on a bus and come back to Brownsville. I got a position for you. You know what I'm saying? I go back. I get, I get back to New York. I get back to New York last, and I got with my cousin. He, he, he had a lane. You know, he gave me a little lane, and I started getting money, and I ain't looked back ever since until 2000. I left, I left New York again, and this shit with the truck driver shit, this happened like in 2002 now. This is like 2000, probably like end of 2002, come 2003, I went back to Brownsville and started fucking with my cousin Millie Mo, and he gave me a little lane, looked out for me and shit, got me clothes and all that shit, and I was in Brownsville from 2003, and till 2006 but in 2005 I had I had well I already did it now I come back to New York in 
I'm running around, with, you know, really more looking out for me. I'm doing my thing, you know what I mean? I got the lane, I'm in the veil, I'm getting a little bit of paper, and this nigga did some dumb shit. Some other nigga did some dumb shit and pulled out like a ninja sword on me. Cause, you know, this is crackhead. She kept calling me to the veil, or I was walking back and forth from up the hill down to Brownsville. She was like, yo, I need 10. Like like ten dimes, so I'm getting up like three o'clock in the morning. <laughs> I'm getting up three o'clock in the morning. The time I get to her crib, she was like, "Yo, I went and seen such and such came, and he came and gave me ten dimes." So I said, "Yo, don't do that. Don't call me down here waking me up about my sleep." And I get here, you tell me you went to one of these other niggas. So she had did that last like two or three times, just like 2005. Um, I went down there. She did it again. Three o'clock in the morning. I get up out my sleep. Go down there, walk from walk through Howard Projects from Pacific Street with my uncle. I was staying with my uncle. I walked from Pacific Street, walk down past Howard, and come straight up Mother Gaston to turn up in Van Dyke. I get to her crib again. Yo, I seen such and such came through. I got it from him. So I said, yo, I told you to stop doing it. I'm taking a risk, carrying this work, coming down here to the room. So I was tight that I just hit her, punched in the face. Boom! I punched in the face and shit. She's screaming, you know what I mean? You know what I mean? She's screaming, ah, calling for her husband. But her husband and them didn't hear her. She had mad crackheads up in her house. She was just collecting money from them and calling me in. But, you know, then if I took too long, she'd call somebody else. But when I got there, I, I, ain't, I ain't get to make my sale.